Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from Central Europe. I hope everybody is having a good start to their week and finding productive uh, avenues to release your energy. I'm sure many of our viewers are, because here you are uh, learning English and for your IELTS exam, so good for you. In this class, we are focusing on uh, the speaking section, specifically part one, and some explanations and practice on how to give the right answers. Hi, Hamant. I saw a couple uh, different uh, members joining in. Hi, Abhishek. And I thought I saw a member that we don't usually see, Keza, as well. Hawaz. Yeah, Kezia Silva. Nice to see you in the class as well. And nice to see some of our regular students, Imran Khyber and Ranveer. Uh, students, uh, while we wait for a few more of your peers, this class is brought to you by aehelp.com. That's academicenglishhelp.com for lots more help with the academic exam. Check us out there. And for the general IELTS, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. That's generalieltshelp.com. I'll quickly show you what those websites look like. This is the academic version here with the blue background. Click that big red button to join the premium package, get access to practice exams, interactive course, and over 100 hours of video lessons. This is the general version with the green background. Click that big red button to join the premium package. There, it's worth spending a couple dollars to get great materials and help anywhere, anytime including our apps, Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help. Hi, Eugene. Love those emojis. They just brighten up the chat on my end. Students, if you have questions about the exam or about our IELTS product, uh, just send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com and I will do my utmost to get back to you in a timely fashion with helpful answers. Our schedule for this week, starting today all the way until Saturday, we ha will have uh, classes today, one class, and then uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we will have two classes each day. Um, tomorrow, we'll do a speaking part two with members, and then uh, we'll do a reading with everybody, and then on uh, Friday, task one, writing task two, and then we'll have a Q&A session on Saturday finishing up with a speaking part three. You can see the schedule on the YouTube channel as well. So check it out there. Of course, everything is according to uh, Central European time. So 13.30 is the start of members chat classes and 15 o'clock the start of all chat classes. Good to see you as well, Parviz. All right, everyone, let's get into speaking today. So let's waste not, want not, uh, speak, speak, speak and repeat, repeat questions, repeat answers, don't be shy, express yourselves, and uh, try to speak nice and loud when you hear me uh, uh, giving feedback for students, okay? So, uh, Himan's asking, let's skip questions one and two, the what's your full name and so on. We've asked those lots and I think everybody has some good ideas on how to answer them. So let's uh, begin with a couple of other warm-up questions. When you go into your exam, the examiner will welcome you. They will ask for your name. They will ask for your identification. Make sure to practice saying those. And then the examiner will say, okay, now I will record this for marking purposes. And they'll start a recorder. Or they should start a recorder at the beginning in case they need to remark. And uh, then they will say, all right, for part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general uh, topic. So let's start with this one today. Uh, where do you live? This is a common icebreaker. Uh, of course, people who sit the IELTS exam should be able to give a very clear, specific and fluent answer. Okay, that's always your goal, giving clear, specific and fluent answers. That's just what you need to do to get those high band scores. So give clear, specific, and fluent 
answers. All right. Awaz Akhmedov says, well, I live in an enormous house with four rooms, which is located in downtown Navai. Awaz, that's good. How big is that enormous house? So is it like uh, 4,000 square feet, 200 square meters? Give me a quantitative number if you say something like an enormous house. Okay, four rooms is a good idea. It's a good start. Maybe give it a little bit more, Awaz. Like, I live in an enormous house with four rooms, three bathrooms, two living rooms, and two kitchens. It's located in downtown Navai. Okay. All right. Abhishek says, well, I live uh, in the city of Ahmedabad, which is located in the western part of India in the state of Gujarat in a two-bedroom flat on the fifth floor with my parents. Good, Abhishek. I made a few corrections there, so pay attention to the grammar and the simplification as well. Okay? So definitely with this question and answer, you want to be very clear. Okay? Have a good first impression. Abdul Borye Saidazimov says... I am from the capital city of Uzbekistan, situated in the northeast of my country, one of the most beautiful and uh, crowded um, areas. And um, do you live in an apartment or in a house, in a duplex, townhome? So give me a little bit of information about your residence, okay? So students, when you're asked about where do you live, um, you should think name the city, the country, the region and give a brief description of your residence. Okay, so a house, apartment, the So include all of that information. That's how you'll start nice and strong, okay? So um, my answer would be currently I'm residing in Budapest, which is the capital of Hungary, in a nice, bright, and spacious two-bedroom apartment on the fifth floor, actually fourth floor, close to the uh, Danube River with my wife and daughter. Okay. So, uh, I'm showing paraphrasing, residing instead of live. Uh, I'm using the progressive or continuous form. I'm using an adjective clause to express that Budapest is the capital of Hungary. Then I'm using some nice qualitative, meaning quality language, like nice, bright, spacious, two-bedroom apartment on the fourth floor. Some good quantitative language to bedroom, fourth floor, uh, visual language close to the Danube River with my wife and daughter. That's what's considered clear expert level communication. Do all native English speakers talk that way? No, absolutely not. Okay. The IELTS interview is not a chit chat that's measuring if you can just chat with a native English speaker. Okay. Band nine not a native English speaker. Band 9 is what's called an expert user of the English language. All right. So your goal is not to talk like a native speaker in everyday conversation. Your goal is to show that you can have expert communication using the English language. Those are two different ideas. So keep that in mind, okay? So again, repeat after me, okay? Speak and repeat. Where do you live? Currently, I'm residing in Budapest, which is the capital of Hungary, in a nice, bright, and spacious two-bedroom apartment on the fourth floor close to the Danube River with my wife 
and daughter. Okay, so that's your expert communication. And this is why to get those high band scores, you really need to practice because you're not just practicing English, but you're also practicing good communication. So uh, next question, what do you like about your home? Give me a nice full sentence, clear answer for this one. What do you like about your home? Okay, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Kyber Moman says, well, my pad has large windows and it's also east facing, so it's bright most of the day. And it's, of course, visible for me to see the sunrise in the early morning at around 6 a.m. OK, uh, Kyber, that's good. Just remember to uh, reflect the question. So what do you like about your home? Um, so I would say, Kyber, uh, for the second half, that I love to watch the sunrise early in the morning when I wake up at 6 a.m. and get ready for school or work. Okay, that would be uh, a better way to finish their Kyber because you're reflecting that. And I do see that later on you say, I love enjoying it a lot and it always keeps me in a positive mood. Try to say that a little bit earlier, Kyber. Okay, so students, reflect the question early on, all right? It's good to talk, but in the IELTS, the examiners don't know if you're just using some memorized language or if you're going off topic. In this way, again, it's not like a real conversation because in a real conversation, we're more patient. We don't really care if somebody goes off topic, but on the IELTS, it's different. You have a time limit and you have to be really specific and focused, okay? So here's my tip, and I'll look at a few more, of course. So be sure to target the key elements of questions right away in your answers so the examiner is confident that you are not just reciting per, uh, memorized phrases or going off topic. Is that clear? So here the question is, what do you like about your home? Well, as I had just mentioned, I love that my home has lots of space so I can do yoga and practice dance with my wife in the living room. Also, I really enjoy that the walls are well insulated, so the pad is quiet and cozy, okay? So again, really focusing on that, what do you like? Well, I love. So it has to be somewhere in my first 10 words. I have to reflect that I'm talking about this point here, okay? Begzod Urkimnov says, uh, frankly speaking, two mega planets are located near my home where there are, it, it's a densely populated place and I go, enjoy going out with my family for a stroll in these entertaining places. Begzod, I'm not sure what mega planets means. Uh, are they shopping malls or something like that? So make sure it's clear for your examiner what you're talking about. Uh, mega planets does not make much sense to me. It sounds like you're talking about a shopping mall. Just make sure that you're clear what that is. Okay. Mahesh Kamalia says, I like my east-facing bedroom because I love to see the sun rays in the morning when I wake up. Good, Mahesh. It's a nice answer. Bebek Tamang says, well, my home has large windows from where I can uh, get fresh air, and I love this as it keeps me uh, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed all day. Try not to repeat words, Bebek. So don't say fresh air keeps me fresh. It's a bit awkward. Okay, 
So Pet Chewy says, to be honest, my house has nothing special. But one aspect which makes me love my home so much is it's the place where I have grown up. Uh, so there are a lot of memories and it has great sentimental value. So Pet, you have some good ideas, but I had to change a lot of your wording for it to be accurate. So if you're telling the examiner that there's nothing uh, distinctly special about your home, except for the fact that that's where you had grown up all your life and it contains a lot of sentimental value, you're getting into some complex vocabulary, grammar, and language. If you're not 100% sure, students, that you can express an idea like that clearly, especially at the start of the interview, don't do it, okay? Because if you go with a simpler idea, like my house is bright and spacious, I love the big garden in the backyard, you can still get a 7, 5, even an 8. But if you're trying to explain that your home has nothing special, it's where you had grown up though, and it has a lot of sentimental value, but you're making a lot of mistakes explaining that, then you're going to get a six. So saying a simple idea clearly will get you a better band score than saying a complex idea poorly. I hope that makes sense. Okay. I'm going to... Um, Add that as a tip to our notes here, okay? Especially in the beginning. Because in part three, you might not be able to get away with it just because the questions can be quite complex. But in the beginning, you have to pay attention to this, okay? So it's better to say a simple idea clearly and get a band 7.5, then to try and express a complex idea poorly and get a band 5.5, okay? Keep that in mind, all right? So that's why you wanna practice that. Okay. Renu Sharma says, I love my home and all of uh, the things are placed, all of my belongings. Uh, students, avoid things. I'm seeing the word things come up in a lot of your answers. Don't use the word things. So Renu Sharma says, I love my, ho uh, my house and all of my possessions are placed according to uh, my taste. I love gardening um, and I have a beautiful kitchen. Uh, I use organic fertilizers and I can cook with produce that I grow right in my backyard. Uh, Renew, same advice as to the previous student. You're trying to express a very complex idea and you're making a lot of mistakes in the language and grammar, which is pushing your score down. Keep it simpler, especially in the beginning. Okay. Yum Huang says, I like that my home is nicely decorated. My landlord put a lot of flower pots next to the main gate and inside the house um, near the windows. I can sit all day without turning on the air conditioning or fan because it's nice and cool. Yum Huang, same advice as Renu. Okay, so it's good to practice in these classes, students, but in the real exam, stick to what you know. Stick to what you know. Okay, so that's also my advice because otherwise you don't learn, right? So uh, it's good to practice. It is a great idea to practice new language in your classes, but uh, in the official exam, Stick to what you know to be accurate, okay? So don't try anything new and fancy, okay? Uh, Yasin, you can ask me the question, but don't spam the chat. Otherwise, I'll have to pause you, okay? So please don't do that, all right? Okay, um, students, let's continue on here. So uh, as long as you're doing a good job, the examiner will say, all right, now let's talk about beverages. 
Okay, what is beverages? Um, drinks, right? Refreshments, different ways to say it. Uh, so here is the first one. How often do you drink juice? Okay, so how often do you drink juice? All right, no worries, Yassine, just keep it in mind, okay? Yassine says, I have a nice home with two siblings, a woman and a dad, and I also have two benevolent grandparents. So you love the people that you share your home with, your family. That's what you want to express there, Yassine, okay? All right. We've got lots of answers coming up. King Iles says, as I am a student, I require more vitamins, so I'm engrossed in drinking lots of juice because it is refreshing and energetic. King Iles, that's a really, really nice answer. You're using some good vocabulary. Um, my advice is uh, to make it even better, King Iles, uh, tell me how often you actually drink juice. So give me the number. Okay, so you say that you drink lots of juice. Does that mean four times, four, five times a day or 10 times a day or three times a week? So what is your understanding of lots of juice, right? So give me that number that will make it that much clearer for the examiner. This is where you want to combine quality with quantity. Okay, uh, Pachu Yadav says, I drink juice once a week because it contains a lot of minerals and vitamins, these nutrients help me uh, build my health and stay strong. Nicely done, Pachu. So once a week. Uh, you can also tell me what kind of juice, mango juice, apple juice, orange juice. Use that lexical resource. Build up that lexical resource mark. Awaz Ahmedov says, well, I rarely drink juice from stores because they contain a lot of sugar and added chemicals, substances which can seriously damage my health. Awaz, keep it to yourself, okay? Uh, however, I always drink a fresh juice uh, from fruits at home that I make, okay? You're going into a lot of detail, Awaz. Careful not to go off topic. I'm not asking you where the juice comes from that you drink. I'm asking you how often you drink juice. So even if you get really excited, students, about an answer because you make your own juice, which is fantastic, it was, uh, make sure that you still stay on topic, okay? So you can say, well, I frequently drink juice because I make it from the fruits that grow in my garden. I have a couple of apple trees. And so I drink juice two, three times a day, especially when the fruits are in season, okay? Nighaim An says, well, I frequently drink juice, especially orange juice. I would say about four times a week. It helps me stay healthy and keep fit. Just yesterday afternoon, I really enjoyed a big cup of OJ with my breakfast. Nighaim, that's your band nine answer right there. Okay, so how often do you drink juice? Well, I frequently drink juice especially orange juice, I'd say about four or five times each week. The high amount of vitamin, British people will say vitamin, uh, vitamin C helps me stay healthy and fit. In fact, I just had a tall glass of OJ with my breakfast this morning before coming to this exam. That's your band nine answer. Very nicely done. Thumbs up. Awesome. Uh, so here we go. Uh, repeat after me. How often do you drink juice? Well, I frequently drink juice, especially orange juice. I'd say about four or five times each week. The high amount of vitamin C helps me to stay healthy and fit. In fact, I just had a tall glass of OJ with my breakfast this morning before coming to this exam. Good, and of course, students, these days, it's especially a good idea to get as much vitamin C into your body as you can because vitamin C, vitamin D, and vitamin K2 will help boost your immune system and protect you
from the coronavirus as well as other illnesses. So now is a great time to get those uh, extra amounts of juice into your system. All right. Next question. Here we go. What is your favorite refreshment and why? Okay. What is your favorite refreshment and why? Okay. Give me a nice full sentence for this one. Okay, Karan Veer says, well, if I had to choose a favorite beverage, then definitely it will be a virgin mojito because it refreshes my throat. Yeah, those are delicious, Karen, and I guess you're not into alcohol, so you're taking it virgin. Good. All right, nice. Nice use of natural language. Yeah, and it's pronounced mojito for those of you that aren't sure. Karen knows that, I'm sure. Um, Flower Sun says, in my opinion, hot chocolate is the vet beverage I enjoy most. I like the sweet taste of milk and the bitter taste of dark chocolate. I always make myself one cup of hot chocolate after breakfast, maybe? Flower Sun, I think is what you wanted to finish with there. Uh, hot chocolate. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, hot chocolate flower sun uh, in the U.S. or Canada, you're going to be surprised, is just uh, chocolate, sugar, and water. It's not m with milk. So uh, here's an interesting little uh, fact, students. Hot chocolate is uh, a cocoa plus water plus sugar. Okay, and chocolate milk. Um, I just don't want you to be surprised when you get to these countries and you order hot chocolate. You'll go, oh, what's that? Where's the milk? Um, so uh, <laughs> if you want it with milk, then you want a chocolate milk. That will have milk, cocoa, <laughs> and uh, sugar. Okay, so careful with that. In many other countries... This is from my experience. Hot chocolate will have milk, but not in the U.S. or Canada or the U.K., okay, or Australia. So careful with that. You might get a bit of a shock. All right. Yasin Vesamya says, The beverage that I love to drink, above all others, has to be coffee, for it keeps me fresh and active. In fact, I drink it once a day. Just yesterday, I had a nice shot of espresso or an American tall coffee, right? Yasin, be specific, but it's a good answer. Uh, Bebek Tamang says, my favorite drink is green tea, which I find very refreshing in all kinds of weather. I like it all the time, if it's hot, cold, or chilly. Yeah, Bebek, very good. And green tea, of course, you can drink it hot or cold, depending on the season. So in the summertime, a nice cold green tea, and in the wintertime, a nice cup of hot green tea would be great as well. Uh, students, uh, be really careful with verb agreement. It's a beverage. You're drinking it, not eating it. I'm seeing too many eats. Okay. Um, be very careful with uh, verb agreement. Okay. Uh, meaning you drink a beverage and eat food. If you say, I like to eat coffee, your score will be banned uh, six or lower. Okay, that's a big no no. Uh, no student with good or very good English will ever make the mistake of saying, I eat coffee or I eat juice. Okay, so be really, really careful. That's a very awkward uh, mistake. Okay. All right. So, um, the drink that I find the most incredible is a glass of single malt scotch on the rocks from 
Scotland or Ireland. I love the strong, creamy, and smoky flavor of this drink. Even though it can be very expensive, I treat myself to a glass about once a month. All right. So uh, repeat after me, students. Uh, what is your favorite refreshment? Why? The drink that I find the most incredible is a glass of single malt scotch on the rocks from Scotland or Ireland. I love the strong, creamy, and smoky flavor of this drink. Even though it can be very expensive, I treat myself to a glass about once a month. All right. So we're moving along nicely, students, and I think you're picking up a lot of um, important tips and hints here uh, to uh, get those better band scores. Here is the next question. Which kinds of drinks are not healthy? Why? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. And I'm just going to make a couple of adjustments here to our camera while you're answering that question and get you a little bit of a better view of everything. All right. So give me some answers to that question. Which kinds of drinks are not healthy and why? All right. Uh, Omar Ashraf says, gas drinks because it breaks our bones. Also, it prevents us from sleeping for many hours um, because it damages our cells. Omar, they're not gas drinks. I think what you're thinking of here are carbonated drinks. Okay, so carbonated drinks are drinks that contain bubbles that are fizzy, that contain bubbles, but we don't say gas drinks. That's very awkward. Okay, so not gas drinks, but carbonated drinks, drinks that are fizzy, drinks that contain bubbles. Okay. Pachu says, I think hard types of drinks are not good for health, such as rum and vodka, as these contain high levels of alcohol, which can damage the liver and the body. Okay, Pachu. All right. Yasin says, nowadays, many companies produce drinks like real juice, but these types of drinks are not healthy and individuals do not need to drink them because they contain a lot of preservatives and chemicals that are difficult for the body to digest. All right. Let's see some more. Elena. Uh, says, definitely cold drinks are unhealthy for all ages. The big downside of cold drinks is that it's uh, drinks containing mostly refined sugars and filtered water, which is a cause of obesity. Yeah, Elena, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by cold drinks in this case. Uh, cold drinks would mean the temperature, Elena. So the beverage itself is cold, right? And oftentimes, if you're drinking very cold beverages, it's difficult for the body to warm up um, the uh, beverage. It cools you down from the inside, which can make us susceptible to catching a cold or the flu, right? So you have to be clear, students, with what you're saying. Uh, Tito says, I believe that all carbonated drinks are unhealthy for humans because they contain a lot of sugar which make people fat. Some of these drinks include Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. Okay. All right. So, um, in my opinion, most carbonated uh, beverages 
like Coca-Cola, Sprite, and ginger ale are unhealthy because they contain high amounts of sugar and acid which have detrimental effects on the body such as causing cavities and obesity. Okay, I agree. Yeah, a lot of those drinks are quite unhealthy. Here we go, students. Repeat after me. Which kinds of drinks are not healthy? In my opinion, most carbonated beverages like Coca-Cola, Sprite, and ginger ale are unhealthy because they contain high amounts of sugar and acid, which have detrimental effects on the body, such as causing cavities and obesity. Uh, cavities are holes in your teeth, okay? And obesity, of course, is being extremely overweight, all right? Okay, so here we go with the next question. Notice how um, in part one, the questions type changes. So uh, what, how, when, where, here we're dealing with the where question. And uh, notice that they're all focusing on you. So use I, me, my, myself, okay? Um, all right, so uh, yeah, Elena, that's what I thought you were talking about. You have to be clear, those aren't necessarily called cold beverages, they're called carbonated beverages or pop, okay? So students, if you want to um, talk about like uh, specifically Coca-Cola, and uh, those kinds of drinks, they're called pop, okay? So pop is Coca-Cola, uh, Sprite, 7-Up, um, okay? So these are all pop. They belong to pop. If you say pop, we immediately know you're talking about these kinds of drinks, okay? So in the future, if you want to be very, very clear that pop is unhealthy, then say pop. Okay, uh, they're called pop because of the fizzy pop, 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 okay, the popping bubbles. All right, um, so here we go. Next question. Where can you buy some delicious beverages near your home? Give me a nice full sentence answer for that one. Maksud says, as my home is located in the heart of Tashkent, there are a variety of beverage shops that serve delicious drinks. But my favorite is about five kilometers from my house. They offer not only delicious, but also natural drinks. Just yesterday, I had freshly squeezed mango juice there. Right, Maksud? Very nice. Okay. Uh, good answer. Nice, clear, complete answer. Thang Nguyen says, well, I purchased scrumptious beverages in Vinmart uh, near the vicinity of my house. Uh, they have a plethora of beverages such as lemon and orange juice. Uh, these drinks uh, do wonders for my cardiovascular system. Thang, very nice. Couple of corrections. Careful. Uh, Saswati says there's a beverage shop named Drink Shop just five blocks away from my home. They sell almost every type of beverage, including mineral water, which I find extremely delicious. Uh, students, delicious beverage. Your answer must focus on delicious, okay? Catch those key words, hold on to them, use them in your answer. Scrumptious is a good paraphrase thing. Uh, you have to use the word delicious or some paraphrase like yummy, yummy, some super yummy drinks, right? Uh, a place where I can purchase some super yummy drinks 
near my home is two blocks away. A small drink stand called Orange Julius where they serve different types of shakes. My favorite is a strawberry and a banana smoothie. I have it once every couple of weeks. All right. So here's my answer, and then I'll uh, read some of your answers as well, some more. Here we go. Repeat after me. Uh, where can you buy some delicious beverages near your home? A place where I can purchase some super yummy drinks near my home is two blocks away. A small drink stand called Orange Julius where they serve different types of shakes. My favorite is a strawberry and banana smoothie. I have one every couple of weeks. Okay. And it's not a server. All right. Uh, that's a nice answer there. Make sure to do something similar. Jaginder Kaur says, I like to buy some delicious beverages near my home uh, at a small drink stand which makes fresh juice. Good Jaginder. What is the drink you like the most? What's the place called? Quadrat Sharifi says, the drink that I find most incredible and fascinating is a glass of black American coffee. Uh, even though it's not healthy, it's delicious, and I can buy it at Starbucks, which is just across the road from, from my flat. Uh, Quadrat, uh, where can you buy delicious beverages? Not what's your favorite, but where can you buy those? Boomi, our member, Shut Bar, says, Well, as I live in the center of town, I can buy a tasty beverage about four blocks from my home on foot, it's called Gracie Plum. They have a variety of drinks and I go there about three times a week. Boomy, very nice answer, really nice. Okay, next question, everyone. How have fruit juices changed compared to a generation before? So near the end of part one, uh, expect to get a couple of questions that are more complex in grammar, specifically present perfect, past perfect, uh, conditionals. Those are very common for the last one or two questions of part one, okay? So how have fruit juices changed compared to a generation before? So now you have to make sure to reflect this present uh, perfect type of answer, okay? Uzbek person says, looking back two decades, juices were no longer prominent among all generations, but on TV, lots of refreshing juices are advertised, and from time to time, it's popular to purchase and drink them. I'm not 100% sure, Uzbek person, what the comparison is there. So are you saying that juices weren't available 20 years ago, but they are now? If you are, you have to be a little bit clear. Okay. Shiro Jidin says, I think the preparation of juices has changed significantly compared to a generation ago because uh, elder people used to prepare their own juice, but nowadays factories manufacture these in large quantities. Okay, Shirojidin, not bad. Watch your grammar. EC Music says, well, I think fruit juices have changed just in one criteria. They've become less natural because of adding um, preservatives and sugars during production. However, the expiration period is now much longer thanks to uh, packaging. Yeah, Tetra Packs. They're called Tetra Packs with the uh, shiny inside foil. All right. It's basically one company that makes a ton of money from those Tetra Packs. 
All right. Uh, Roshni Kunte says, well, it's changed tremendously as compared to a generation before. Hands down these days, uh, there's more topping involved in smoothies and also uh, ice creams added, uh, which was not available two decades before. Yeah, if you take a Coca-Cola and you put a scoop of vanilla ice cream in it, Roshni, that's called a float. It's called a float, float, because the ice cream's floating on the Coca-Cola. It's called a float. Um, all right. Yosef Al-Fatoum says, I usually buy cold, delicious drinks from a restaurant called Troshka near my house. I don't know exactly the ingredients, but it definitely contains milk, different kinds of fruits, and it's quite yummy. Good, Yosef. That's for the previous one, right? So, um, I believe that juices have changed a fair bit from two, three decades prior, mostly in the amount of real fruit contained within these beverages. During my parents' time, uh, most juices were 100% fresh squeezed goodness. But these days, many juices contain just 25% or less real fruit. The rest is sugar, water, and preservatives. All right. So, students, repeat after me. How have fruit juices changed compared to a generation before? I believe that juices have changed a fair bit from two, three decades prior, mostly in the amount of real fruit contained within these beverages. During my parents' time, most juices were 100% fresh squeezed goodness. But these days, many juices contain just 25% or less real fruit. The rest is sugar, water, and preservatives. All right. Uh, final question. If you could try any kind of drink in the world, what would it be and why? Give me a nice full sentence answer for that one. If you could try any kind of drink in the world, what would it be and why? Hmm. All right. So here you might say something like, hmm, that's an interesting question. I've never really thought about it. Just give me a moment. Okay, so you can buy yourself a little bit of time with that kind of expression, especially when it's true, okay? Now, students, don't use this kind of sentence if it's not true. Like, sometimes I hear students say, hmm, that's an interesting question. I've never really thought about it when the question is how often do you drink juice, okay? Don't say, hmm, that's an interesting question. I've never really thought about it. I mean, come on, how often do you drink juice? Most of us have an idea. We don't need to think about it. But when the question is interesting and uncommon, then it's okay to do this. So like in this case, the question, if you could try any drink in the world, might not be some idea that you think of every day. So you can say, yeah, it's an interesting question, okay? All right. Sasha says, given the chance, I would give a shot to Japanese matcha tea since the benefits of this drink are widely extolled. Not only does this drink have a positive impact on my health, but also it's said to make people feel younger. Uh, good, Sasha. Nice. Um, don't change to you. Okay. Not your health my health. I'm asking about you, so use my, okay? Otherwise, nice answer, all right? 
Yeah, and some uh, real Japanese matcha tea can be very expensive as well. I lived in Japan, and there are some types that are extremely costly. Nafosat says, I would like to try the malt scotch that Adrian spoke about because it has a smoky flavor, and it's worth to drink it once in a lifetime. Nafosat, I got that while I was reading, and you put a smile on my face. Thank you for that. Cool. That's kind of my answer as well, right? So hmm, that's an interesting question. I've never really thought about it. Just give me a moment. Well, perhaps. Perhaps I would try the most expensive uh, scotch in the world. As I said before, I really enjoy a glass every now and again. And the most expensive glass would likely taste amazing and cost around 100,000 US dollars. Okay, some scotches can be up in the hundred, two hundred thousand dollar range. Some very unique bottles. All right, so uh, hmm, that's an interesting question. I've never really thought about it. Uh, just give me a moment. Well, perhaps I would. Now, here's a little correction, students. This is a conditional. On the IELTS, when you hear a conditional, definitely use that. And I see some of you did that, which is good. Uh, well, given the chance. Okay, so given the chance, perhaps, so given the chance shows that conditional. Given the chance, perhaps I would try the most expensive scotch in the world. As I said before, I really enjoy a glass every now and again, and the most expensive glass would likely taste amazing and cost around $100,000 US. Okay, uh, Awaz says, if I were able to taste any kind of beverage, I would definitely try forest fruits with melted chocolate as it would not only taste amazing but it would be a great compound with slow and fast carbohydrates hmm, okay interesting it was all right students i'm sure that there are many amazing and unique beverages in the world that we could try and hopefully many of us will get the chance i know that for those coffee lovers out there there's some coffees that are very unique and expensive as well uh, Homer says if I had the chance I would definitely uh, start with a French wine Chateau 1932 year harvest yeah some of those uh, Mouton Rothschilds can definitely get up there Homer into the uh, million dollar range for a bottle so that's a good pick I'd be there with you Homer trying that beautiful glass of wine uh, students for lots more great IELTS materials and help Check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and g-i-e-l-t-s help.com for general. Again, I'll quickly just show you our websites. This is the general with the green background. Click that big red button to join the premium package. This is the academic with the blue background. Click that red button to join us there. Thank you so much for joining me uh, on this uh, speaking in this speaking session. I really enjoyed your comments, reading them, correcting them. I hope you got lots of useful advice and practice. Keep it up. I will be back uh, tomorrow. You're very welcome, Maksud. Thank you, Homer. Uh, tomorrow, members chat class starts at 1330 Central European time. And all chat class will start at 15 o'clock Central European time. Keep yourself occupied. Keep yourself healthy. Drink lots of juice. And hopefully, I'll see you tomorrow. Much love. Bye for now.